thank you for staying with us. Now, dozens of protesters have stormed the national headquarters of the All Progressives Congress to demand the sack of the national chairman, Adams Oshomale. The protesters, who claim to be members of the APC Young Stakeholders Forum, stated that they were tired of reverses of the party's victories in Zamfara, to Rivas, and now Bayelsa State. They called on President Mohamed Buhari and the national leader, Asiwaju Hamed Tinubu, to intervene. And joining me to discuss this, still in the building with me, is political analyst Alexa Wilkos. Thank you for staying with us, Alexa. Thank you. And also joining us to discuss this is Biodun Biodun Show with me. Thank you, Biodun, for joining us you on know. the show this evening. Now, this is not the first time the call for Oshomele to be sacked is making the rounds in the news. What do you think is fundamentally wrong? Let me, let me start with you, Biodun. Oh, yeah. Well, um, it's quite un not unusual um, when you look at the way the last election went um, in terms of internal party democracy and the controversy surrounding it. Whether Oshomo is right or wrong, uh, uh, the fact is um, there was division within the party, which took time. They're still on that mission to heal it. Don't forget the president also set up um, a reconciliation committee. committee. Uh, at a point in time, because of the problems, you know, prior to the election uh, within the party, and many people were pointing up, um, accusing fingers at Oshomole, then you now have that um, problems with the primaries. You have the outcome. We are beginning to see the some of the effects, you know, in terms of um, results now being overturned. Yes, the by the court the ruling. Uh, yes, and um, primarily it's not because. Um, votes were rigged, or particularly in the case of um, uh, Bayelsa, not because votes were rigged, it was just simply because of perceived uh, incompetence, you know, in the selection of um, candidates for primaries. And many of the protesters are holding Oshomole responsible, you know, for that. And they felt um, so bitter. And also you have the problems going on in Oshomole's um, Edo State. Um, is engulfed in a battle with the sitting governor of the state. Yeah, governor and, Obaseke. Uh, Obaseke. And Obaseke has also alluded, you know, to the issue of godfatherism, the fact that um, Oshiamole wanted to impose people and control the government and control selections of candidates. So that on its own also, you know, it's coming to a point that when you take all the issues within the APC, um, it is not unexpected that some people, or particularly the youths in APC, will now feel um, unsettled by it. Unsettled in two ways. One, because of the reverses in the courts and uh, the problems they are thinking can happen in Edo State if the party is split down the middle and the governor is forced to go to another political party. The other side of it is also the issue that if they allow good fatherism to continue to Rain, then what happens to their own faith? Because um, we've seen the outcome of Godfatherism is not always about the best possible candidate. What we've seen in Nigeria is that is the worst possible candidates that have been imposed. So we end up with the worst 11, you know, ruling the best 11. Now, Alessa, do you think Oshuman is largely to be blamed for all of these court rulings <coughs> and reversals? He has no power over the judiciary and what should be done. Yeah, Oshuman uh, may have his own fault or his own leadership style. Uh, don't forget, he's not uh, a push-away leader. He's vibrant. He speaks. Even he speaks, even the opponent gets scared. And so he challenges the status quo and makes sure that uh, uh, he came into the party to, according to him, to instill some discipline. When he, when, before he came, uh, we had an Oyegu who was a lame dog chairman. I must be very, very factual about that. Uh, he might be a gentleman, uh, but running a big party like APC as a gentleman, as a bishop or a pastor, I don't think, or an, or, or an imam, I don't think it, called, it was. So he was not that successful. So when the Shimole came, he came with a different style. Remember his antecedents from labor and all, he came with a different yeah. style. One of the things he wanted to do is say, well, he wants to ensure that the governors do not hold uh, the party uh, hostage or the structure of the party hostage. And so the primaries were criminals, like, like Shomi has just said, because a lot of people could not Phantom, the, especially from the governors, could not find the fact that they are not allowed to pick their successors. Mm -hmm. he, he, he made it clear that, look, let everybody have opportunity. For me, which, he, he might have his own fault, but for me, which was okay. Uh, we saw it play out in Ogun State. We saw it play out in Zamfara. Zamfara, why will you, how will you blame Oshimone for what happened in Zamfara? APC swept all the election. You know that the governor, Yari, and mm -hmm. his uh, arch rival, uh, Senator, what's his name now? 
could not, were at each other's throats. Yari said he will not give the other man space. The other man said he will not give Shari space. And it was them that took themselves to court. Okay. So, ju just a second. Now, it happens in, in Imo. It also happened in Imo. Yes. Imo State, but APC was so fortunate that at the end of the day, they all lost Imo State too. Because the personas, the, 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 the actors there could not agree. So some of the problem may not be really be Oshimole's problem. But because he has a new leadership style that he wants to instill, he has his own fault. Oshimole is, is stubborn, he has his own fault. But he has a leadership style that he wants to instill. Yeah. And any party that has no discipline and structure, and that party is serving for a doom. I think that's what Oshimole stands for. Yeah. What, what some of the claims they, they made was that before he came, that the, the party controlled about 20, 20, 24 states and now down to 18. Don't you think this could have happened with anybody but person else being chairman aside so show me No, no, I don't think the loss of some states by APC is um, simply because of Oshomale. Okay. No. The issue is more than that. It's yes. more complex. You know, there's the perceived insecurity in the country, which many people feel, you know, is a major issue for them uh, in terms of election. If you remember what happened to Jonathan when he was in power, the insecurity in the country or perceived witness of um, Jonathan in dealing with security issues, you know, contributed largely to why he was kicked out and APC was brought in. So after four years, uh, Nigerians are gauging, you know, the, the, the body temperature to say, look, what has um, improved? The government on its own part has tried to, um, to, to assure the populace that, look, we've been able to um, defeat Boko Haram. And I think that was the wrong language, you know, expression used. Um, there's no way you can defeat an insurgency in that way. If you go into history, history. of uh, military history, yeah. you realize that it's, it's only going to mutate from one form to the other. I thought the appropriate language would have been, at that point in time, we have degraded Boko Haram's okay. capacity. Okay. And that would have sold very well with the public. So there's a perceived feeling of insecurity which actually fueled dissension within the country to the point that some APC you know, members did not go and vote, and some actually voted against their party. Is that so true? you cannot just hold Oshemole responsible for that. Beyond the show, we made political analysts. Thank you for joining us on the show this evening right. and for your Thank contribution. You. And also political analyst Wilkos Alexa. Thank pleasure. you very much it's for your contribution. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take our plus report now. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Do stay with us. The 2019 presidential candidate Obi Ezekwesili, Pat Utomi, and other political elites have called on the electorate to demand a shift from democratic monopoly to real democracy by insisting on good governance from the government. This was at the first fixed politics conference held in Lagos to mark the troll light on the set topic of the former education minister Obi Ezekwesili from the Robert Bosch Academy, Germany. We need a new political culture that subordinates private interest to the collective welfare. And you can do that by the kind of political class that will emerge different from the current monopoly political class. We cannot have rational public conversation in Nigeria because the moment you point to something that is important that we need to talk about to solve it, the Minister of Information will send people to begin to blackmail you on social media, call you all kinds of names. So our country is in a terrible position because we have the wrong people in public office who don't even understand the meaning of public conversation. If we know that good governance is an absolute necessity for countries to grow and develop, and we know that good governance is not possible without good politics. And then we also know that what we have seen so far across our continent, and especially our country, is nothing that comes close to good politics. It therefore means that there is a structural issue. To break that ceiling, you need to fight. You need to work hard. You need to have long hours.
Now, every government in any democratic society must work as a team and there must be a cordial relationship between policymakers and political appointees towards the same targeted goals and successes of the government. The government cannot continue to allow the security challenges facing the country to fester. And if indeed there is a conflict between the national security advisor and the chief of staff, this is dangerous for national security. The president should take action and define the roles of his appointees before things get out of hand. And for the embattled APC national chairman, Adam Sushomale, and the perpetual call for his sack, it's indicative that all isn't well within the party and the need to resolve its fundamental issues is glaring to all onlookers and players in the political space. Will the call to sack him be heeded too? Will his eventual sack bring about the much needed gains to the party as desired by the agitators? We can't help but wait and see how this pans out. That's our show for tonight, and thank you for staying with us. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time. Be well.